This is the last webinar out of our series, and I would like to ask Dr. Stanley 10 rapid fire questions. And Jane, they are um, about NICU music therapy and about music therapy, not specific to your topic. And then afterwards, we will come back to the topic if the attendees have questions sure. or also maybe have a question that I always wanted to ask you. Since we're having uh, you here on the screen tonight, I want to take that opportunity. And so now my 10 questions, some of them, you can answer them in any length you want to. And some are, of them are just have fill in, fill in the blank award. Okay. Okay. All right. So my first question for you is what the world needs right now is. Peace and serenity and wholeness and listening carefully and thinking and avoiding the emotional angst that comes from rhetoric that has very little meaning. So for me, truth and sincerity and wholeness, very important. Thank you. Number two, what is the one thing in life you are glad you did? Oh, have a child. That was one of the most wonderful things I did. I love being a teacher. I love doing research, but it is so wonderful to have that relationship with an adult child and to have grandchildren. So that would be it. Mm -hmm. My question number three for you is, what is most essential for NICU MTs? I think the research, because I'm totally concerned with the care of the infant and the welfare of the infant. The premature babies are so fragile when they are very premature and we could do harm. We could play music too loudly. We could play music that is not helping with the neurological wiring of the brain, but that is harming the neurological wiring of the brain. And we could be ignoring warning signs that that child is not accepting what we're doing. And that really scares me that I'm an advocate for bringing music into the NICU, but that we could actually be doing harm. And I think to be so careful with the research, to be sure that we are following all of the medical guidelines and that we know the guidelines and we know the gestational needs of the child at their gestational age. I just think that is so critical. So for me, it has to be based in research. Mm -hmm. That was no surprise that you said that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number four, what is one surprising thing you have to do in your job on a daily basis? Oh, good grief. <laughs> try, <laughs> try to interact with people without being in their real presence. I mean, Zoom is not the greatest way to do class. Um, advising students about their life over the telephone, like what courses they should take or whether they should get a job or go to grad school or, um, I just find that, that I miss the human connection as everybody else in the world is saying right now. And I will be so glad to get back to that, hopefully very soon. But you're doing it very well and you're here even in the <laughs> webinars. So I'm very proud of you that you're doing this. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Number five, what should be a required reading for working with premature infants? Well, I think that um, the premature infant book where we have tried to compile all of the information. And for me, the newest piece is the um, gestational developmental milestones that Emily Pivovarnik has put together so carefully. And she did one of your webinars on that. And that was just her um, thesis research mm -hmm. and it will be published soon. And I think that that is going to be imperative. Yeah. And that was a very valuable webinar she gave. Uh -huh. And, and she yeah. put together, we sort of knew uh, generally what the gestational needs were at each age, but she pulled together every medical text she could find and summarized it. It's really a fantastic scholarly job. Mm -hmm. Glad she did the work for us. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Number six is a fill in the blank. So there should be a word, is underrated in music therapy. Competence. All right, <laughs> number seven. <laughs> Nikki MTs are the most fill in the blank people. I think compassionate. Mm -hmm. 
I think so too. And number eight, what gives you hope for the music therapy profession? Oh, the enthusiasm of young people who come into the profession, and I think that is our future, the, the people who are coming into the program. And music therapy is ever expanding. Uh, when I started many years ago in the career, I had no idea I would end up working with premature infants. But, but I am hearing uh, new theories and possibilities and seeing people go into new areas of music therapy all the time. And I think that that is very exciting. It's a rapidly expanding field and I think that will continue happening in the future. Mm -hmm. And number nine, if you leave a message for premature baby's 20th birthday, what would it say? <laughs> I would say, I hope somewhere in your love of music, there's something related to the lullabies and the interactions that we had with you and that um, you relate to music in the same way that I do. Beautiful. And my last question, number 10. What's the word of encouragement for our webinar attendees? I think um, the word is being tenacious. That many people who know me personally say, you're the most tenacious person I've ever met. I can't tell you how many times I've heard from a medical person, you don't have enough research, your research isn't strong enough, the N is not large enough. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years and I, I will take on any doctor in the world with my amount of research for a very specific use of music therapy in the NICU. And I have no hesitation about doing that. Um, and, and being tenacious, uh, being able to articulate what um, I think the research does show about music therapy and being willing to negotiate with people and say it again and ask questions. What is it? What is it you're looking for? What are you looking to hear that you think is missing from what we're doing. So um, I think persistence is very, very powerful in this field. I think the parents and the babies deserve us to be persistent because I think we have so much to offer. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, Jane. That's a hard thing to do, Petra, is to <laughs> answer 10 questions off the top of your I think you did it really well. 